하십니까? Hello everyone. Oh, oh, 너무 좋죠. Oh, the music is wonderful, right? Yeah. 예, 정말 좋습니다. It's really really good. 이런 음악을 들으면 여러분의 마음이 달라지는 것 같아요. I think as you listen to music, your heart changes. 실제로 사람이 기쁨이나 슬픔을 느끼는 것은 마음입니다. And actually it's the heart that feels happiness or sadness. 사실 여러분 눈이 뭘 본다고 생각하지만 you know, you think that it's your eyes that see, 실제 눈은 뭘 보는 게 아닙니다. Actually, it's not your eyes that see the things. 그냥 빛을 내게 전달하는 일만 눈이 합니다. But your eyes just relay the light to the brain. 그런데 그 빛이 눈을 통해 들어와서 신경을 통해서 우리 마음에 전달됐을 때. And so when the light enters our eyes and through the nerves, when that information is relayed to our hearts, 우리 몸에 발가락이나 손가락이나 이런 것들은 전혀 느낌이 없습니다. And you know our fingers and our toes, they have no feelings at all. 우리 몸에 느낄 수 있는 것은 마음뿐입니다. The only thing that can feel inside of us is the heart. 기쁨도 즐거움도 슬픔도 마음이 느끼는 것입니다. The joy, the happiness, the sadness, it's all felt in the heart. 그래서 여러분은 마음의 세계를 배우며 And So once you learn the world of the heart, 밝게 살수 있는 길이 있습니다. There is the path for you to live in brightness. 저 목사인데 성경을 많이 읽었습니다. And I'm a pastor and I read the Bible a lot. 성경에서 예수님이 하신 일은 제일 먼저 우리 몸에 다리에 팔에 어떤 병을 고치기 전에 And the first thing that Jesus does in the Bible before he heals the sicknesses in our legs or our arms 우리 마음에다가 소망이나 기쁨이나 그걸 심는 일을 예수님은 하죠. Jesus first instills hope or joy these things in our hearts. 저는 62년도에 예수님을 만났어요. I met Jesus in 1962. 예수님이 제게 들어오신 이후에 and after Jesus entered into me, 성경을 읽을 때제 속에 계상이 놀라운 사실들이 일어나기 시작했어요. 지금까지 내가 한 번도 가지고 온 새로운 힘을 얻게 되고 I began to have a new that I'd never had 또 내가 한 번도 가지고 온 지혜를 얻게 되고 and also I the that I've never had 기쁨을 누리게 되는 것 and I began to have joy. 그리고, 그리고 내 삶은 너무 밝게 이끌어져 가는 걸볼 수가 있어. And I could tell from then on my life was led into so much brightness. 놀라운 것은 amazing thing was 하나님 우리 속에 사랑이 너무 놀라웠어. You know the God's love towards us was so amazing. 제가 대구에서 이제 신학교를 하고 있었는데요. I was doing a theology school in Daegu. 어날 우리 학교에 새로운 학생이 이제 모집을 했습니다. And one day a new student came to our school. 그때 제가 이제 그 학생들 하나하나 면접을 했는데요. And so a group of new students came be recruited and I was interviewing them one by one. 경남 그 합천에서 온 학생 하나가 있었어요. And there was a student from 경남 합천. 제가 이제 그 학생하고 이제 이야기를 좀 오래 했어요. And I spoke with that student a little bit. 그 학생이 지금까지 지난, 지난 과거 이야기를 쭉 하는. And that student me told me about all the path that he's been through in his past. 이 학생은 축구를 너무 좋아해. And the student loved to play soccer. 굉장히 가난하고 어렵게 살면서. And he was from a very poor family. 그러면 공이 그 인생의 전부였었어. And the ball was everything to him in his life. 매일 공을 쳤어. Every day he would play soccer. 자기 소원은 국가 대표팀이 돼서. His dream was to be on the national team. 월드컵에 나가는 것이야. And to compete in the World Cup. 그래서 정확하게 많은 수비수들을 제끼고 and 공을 차서 and he wanted to get by the many defenders and kick the ball. 백네트가 철렁하고 공에 맞아 뭐탁 운질 그걸 상을 그렇게 기뻐. And kicking the ball strong into the back net of the goal, and that's what he would dream about. 수많은 중 앞에서. In front of many people. 제 공을 차는 꿈을 꾸었어. He dreamt about kicking the ball. 그 공을 차도 공이 백네트에 탁 철렁하고 그걸 생각하면. And he would kick the ball, and the ball would get caught in the net of the goal. Thinking about this made him so happy. And he did training to do this. And he entered a soccer academy in Seoul. And he practiced soccer every day. And when he played soccer, he could forget about everything else. He was so happy. But one day, he felt something strange in his body. What's wrong with my body? I feel so tired. Oh, my body is struggling. And he went to the hospital. And then the doctor said this is tuberculosis. 
지금은 한국에 약들이 너무 너무 좋기 때문에. Right now, the medicine in Korea is very advanced. And so tuberculosis is not even considered a sickness today. But back then, medication was not good, and tuberculosis was a very terrible disease back then. 그 계략 균이 공기 중에서 날아다니기 때문에. Especially the tuberculous germs, uh, they spread through the air. 숨을 쉬면 공기 속으로 계략 균이 나와서. And if you breathe out, the tuberculous germs come out into the air. 한방 있는 가족들이나 친 가족들에게 전년될 확률이 굉장히 높아. And it can be very contagious to your family or the people that you live with. 내이 친구가 계략이었어. And this guy had tuberculosis. And you know, you need lots of nutrients to uh, survive tuberculosis. But his family was so poor, he couldn't eat much. So he had to quit going to school. And then he returned to his home in the countryside. And all of his dreams were broken. He was so sad. And then in his hometown, his father had passed away. There was his elderly mother and his older brother and his sister-in-law and three nephews. And he didn't say anything and he just stayed there. 형님하고 어머니가 둘이 무슨 이야기를 하기. And one morning he saw his older brother and his mother talking about something. 별로 관심을 갖지 않고 있었는데. And he didn't really care what they were talking about. 갑자기 어머니 막 소리 통곡을 하고 우는 거야. But suddenly all of a sudden the mother started screaming and weeping. 무슨 일이지? What's going on? 형이 불러서 이제라 너희 좀 오너. And then the older brother called him over. Hey, Hijin, come here. He went to him. 여기 앉아라. Have a seat. He sat down. 동생아 미안하다. Little brother, I'm sorry. 내가 이런 이야기하기 미안하지만 오늘은 이야기를 해야겠다. I'm sorry to be telling you this, but I have to tell you this. 만일에 너하고 나하고 둘이만 산다면, if it's just you and me, the two of us living together, 내가 너한테 결핵 걸린다 문제들 가보도 없다. Then it's not a problem that I get tuberculosis from you. 우리 집에는 어린 아이들이 있다. But we have little kids in this home. 네가 우리 집에 있으면 분명히 우리 아이들도 and if you stay in this home, surely even our kids will be infected with tuberculosis. Then everybody in our family will die and our family will be destroyed. And so I have to tell you something very cold. If you stay in this home, we will all die of tuberculosis. So today you're going to have to leave this home. It was so shocking to him. But... Upon listening to his brother, you know, he had no choice. So he stood up. And the mother just kept on crying. But the mother did not say anything more. He told his older brother, Older brother, I'm sorry. And I should not have come here to begin with. You know, I was short in thought. He got up. And he had nothing at all. He just left the house. There was nowhere to go. He had no money. And the cold winter was coming. He just had some thin summer clothes and that was it. And he left the house. And he wandered the neighborhood all day long. And he was most worried that the cold weather, you know, where am I going to sleep tonight? Who's going to uh, let me in to sleep? And all day long he searched thinking about this. But there was nobody who invited him to him in to sleep. But right then what he saw was on the outskirt of the village there was an isolated house. And that house it's for when people die there are these boxes that carry out the dead bodies. And so they don't let those boxes remain in the village because they're dirty. And so people built a house outside the village to hold those 
boxes. And because it was so cold and so windy. And so he went into the house of coffins to sleep there. And that's where he spent the night. On the cold floor. Still, at least it blocked the wind, but it was still cold. And many thoughts came to him. You know, what's going to happen to me in the future? Will I be able to survive this winter? Will I be able to overcome my disease? What will I eat? What if I freeze to death this winter? And so there was nobody he could discuss this with or ask help from. Mothers abandoned me and so did my brother. Who's going to help me now? And all night long he thought about this and that and then fell asleep. And he woke up in the morning. And he went outside the house of coffins. And he had ate nothing the day before. And he had shivered so much in their cold. His body felt bad. He went down to the pond. And got some pond water to wash his face. And then he stood up. Somebody called to him, hey, Hijin. He looked. It was the neighborhood woman. Hey, Hijin, do you want to come with me? Where are we going? I'm going to church. What, what do you do at church? He had nowhere to go, so he followed her. They walked about four kilometers. And they went, it wasn't a church, it was a small home. And there was about 10 people in the room and they had service together. And there was this one young lady preaching from the Bible. And the day before he was struggling in the cold all day and he slept so cold but now he was in a warm room it felt so good. He leaned against the wall and he leaned his head against the wall and he fell asleep. He fell deep asleep. He doesn't know how long he slept. And then when he woke up the service was over. The people had left. There were a few still there. And they had set up some food and they were eating. And they woke him up saying, let's eat lunch. And so he ate lunch. And many thoughts crossed his mind as he was eating. They're asking me to eat lunch. Do they know I have tuberculosis or not? Am I supposed to tell them? What if I tell them and they don't let me eat? Oh, whatever, I'm just going to eat. And that day, with a very, very thankful heart, he ate the food. And the day before he ate nothing at all. And this morning he also ate nothing. The, the, food was, the food was so delicious. He was so thankful. And then lunch was over. And, and then the woman who preached the word in the morning brought a Bible to him. And she was saying something to him. He couldn't understand what she was saying. But after listening for a long while, he, she was talking about sins. Now I have so many sins, that's why I got this disease. And then she started talking about Jesus. But the amazing thing was, wow, my sins are forgiven. The cross forgave all of my sins. He discovered that all of his sins were washed away clean. And from then on, he became so happy. And then it became evening, so they gave him dinner. He ate it. And then they had evening service. And then they left that home. And then he returned to the house of coffins. And he was so thankful for what happened during the day. He was so happy that he got to have lunch and dinner. And he was so happy that his sins were forgiven. And now he got to believe in God. He was so happy about that. 
And then in that house of coffins, he fell asleep. And then as he was going to sleep that night, he prayed to God. He was the first prayer in his life. God, the weather is so cold. And so I don't know, God, if I could survive this winter. God, I have one wish. The cold winter is about to begin. Right now it's bearable. But if it gets colder, I'm going to freeze to death. God, if you love me, God, give me a room for me to survive the winter. I need a room to survive the winter. No, God, I pray to you, please give me a room. He prayed. And he didn't know how to pray. That was just what he said. And then it became the next morning. And he went out to the village. An older man called him. Hey, Hijin, come here, come here. Oh, yes. Where were you yesterday? Why? I, I was looking for you all day yesterday. I didn't see you anywhere. You're looking for me? Why would you be looking for me? And the older man said. And then what he said was. This older man, he owned a big field under the mountain and he had planted apple trees there. And in the spring, he would be there raising the apple trees. And he would cut down the branches and give them pesticides, give them fertilizer, and water them, and he would grow those trees. And in the fall, many, many apples were ripened. He plucked them all, sold the apples, and he made money. And then winter was starting. And so after selling all the apples, there was no more work to be done in the garden. And so he didn't want to live at the garden anymore. He wanted to go home. He wanted to go home, but there was a problem. If he vacates the garden, he felt like somebody was going to come and steal his stuff. So he needed someone to keep the garden. So he needed someone to keep the garden. And then he heard that Hijin got tuberculosis and kicked out, got kicked out of his house. 그래, yeah, I looked for you all day yesterday. 자니, 가서, you could stay at the house at the garden. And we have lots of apple branches that I cut down. And if you heat it with use that for fire, the, the room's gonna be warm and nice. <sighs> And he thought he was dreaming. God, I used to... God, I've never believed in Jesus before. And yesterday I prayed and you've already answered my prayer. Yes, sir, I will live in that house. And he went there. The floor was dusty. In Korea, they have the boiler system where they heat the fire underneath the floor to heat the room. And then he started the fire. And then he got a lot of the apple branches that were cut down and fed the fire. And the heat from the fire was so warm. He went into the room and he washed the rag in the water and wiped up the room. And the room was getting so warm, it was so nice. God, I prayed to you and now you answer my prayer. And he was so happy in his heart. And then he did not even take medication. His sickness got better and better. Tuberculosis is very difficult to be healed from. And God would from time to time give him food to eat. And then after some time he was completely healed. And he came to my theology school to become a pastor. I asked him, how 
what brought you here? And he gave me that testimony. And then I thought about it. And then he finished the theology school. He became a pastor. And now he's become a pastor of a big church in Gwangju. And so as I read from the Bible, how important the heart of man is. When God made man, God made the heart. When people become same-hearted and their hearts flow together, people begin to feel happiness. And so it's important to have your heart flow among people. But when our hearts flow between us and God, I got to know that amazing things begin to happen. And that day, after receiving the forgiveness of sins, and so God was with him in one by one, he and God became one heart. And I could see from then on, God helped him with everything. And afterwards, he changed into a person, an unbelievable person. In John chapter 8, there is the story of the woman taken in the act of adultery. At the time of Jesus in Israel, there was the law. If a person has sex with somebody who is not his wife, with somebody who is not her husband, that is the sin of adultery. And there was a scary law that says such should be stoned to death. And there was a certain woman, she committed adultery with a man who was not her husband. And she was caught and she was supposed to be stoned to death. In Africa, there is a strange law. If you get caught, Stealing, you know, people around him, they kill him. And how do they kill him? They get a big car tire. And there are the tubeless tires. And they fold the person into the tire. And they put a living person into that tire, fold them inside the tire like this. Put it in the tire. And bring some gas and put it all over the tire. And then light the tire and kill that person on the spot. There are a lot of people in Africa who get caught stealing and get killed this way. And so if you get caught stealing, that's what happens, they get put to death. And people think, yes, that's the right thing to do. And this woman was taken in the act of adultery. And men brought this woman and took her to the a mountain valley. And the first thing they wanted to do was stone her. And many people were together ready to stone her. And the stones would hit her on the head, the chest, the arms. And so if you stone them with rocks this big, it'll crack their heads. And they would bleed and they would die. And then they would pile up a tomb of stones and spit on that tomb. And they would return home. People who want to be better than others but when they are unable to be better than others, you know, they have the heart to be better than others. And when they meet somebody like that, they ruthlessly want to stone them and they, are ur they feel the urge to do that. So this woman was caught in the act of adultery. She was caught in the act and people took this woman to the valley. And then one of them made a suggestion. Let's not kill this woman. Let's first bring her to Jesus. I heard that Jesus says he loves sinners. Will he tell us to kill this woman or let her live? And they brought this woman to Jesus. 
But Jesus didn't say anything. He just wrote on the ground with his finger. And then Jesus got up and said to them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. All of a sudden, they hesitated to stone her. Do I not have sin? They thought about it. And they all had sins. They were ashamed and they all threw away their stones one by one and they left. And at last, Jesus and this woman remained. And Jesus said to this woman, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? No man, Lord. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And sent this woman away. And in this story, we can find very, very deep meanings. Everyone, most of you are students. From now on in your life, you will face many things you will not be able to handle on your own. It would be good if you could take care of these problems on your own. But many times you cannot handle these problems on your own and you go through difficulties. There is a sister in my church that I know. And this sister had another woman who, who she called her older sister. And what she did was, no, her job was to design clothes and sell clothes. And in her early 20s, she made millions of dollars. And when she made millions of dollars, what people feel in their hearts is and they think I want to live happily but I cannot because I don't have enough money and all of a sudden if they have a lot of money you know, how do most people's hearts flow with money they want to go and enjoy pleasures and there is a place that these people go to. And lots of people also live in New York. There's poor people, rich people, great people, not great people. And most people just live through life. But people who made a lot of money suddenly and they have enough money to do whatever they want all of a sudden. Then through that money they want to find peace and happiness for their hearts. And now they have money and they want to find happiness using their money. But most people who go that route, they enter into corruption. And many people head that way. And people who don't have money, they cannot go because they have no money. But this woman, she had money, so she thought with this she could be happy. But there is no happiness there. And there is more and more struggle in her heart. And then as she continues that route, what do those people begin to do? They start to get insomnia. They have to take sleeping pills. At first only one pill. Later on two pills. Three pills. And still they can't sleep. And then they have to take anxiety medicine. And little by little they start to go crazy. And so this woman, she made a lot of money. And so she was struggling to find satisfaction in her heart through money. And she thought it would make her happy, but there was no joy. And from a certain point, she couldn't sleep. She starts to take sleeping pills. And she could not sleep. 
And right then, her business began to struggle. Her clothes would not sell very well. And her stores would be filled with inventory. And suddenly, her debt started to grow. One day, no matter how much she put her head on the pillow to sleep, she couldn't sleep. At around 2 in the morning, somebody was calling her. Nobody was there. She heard a voice, Chuban, Chuban. And she couldn't tell whether she was hearing this voice in her ear or in her heart. And what that voice said was, I'm, I'm going to help you. I'll give you rest. And those words sounded so warm. Oh, it sounded so warm. And right then that voice said to her, go near the window. And he went near the window. Open the window. And she opened the window. And she lived in a high-rise apartment. Bring over the chair. And she put it in front of the window. Get on top of the chair. Jump out. And she was shocked. If she jumps out, she's going to die. 그러면 모든 게 끝이야. If you do this, everything will end. 고통이 끝나. Your pain will end. 평안해져. You'll have true peace. 행복해져. You'll be happy. 뛰어내려. Jump out. 어린 딸이 생각났어. And she thought of her young daughter. 누군가가 속에서 이야기했어. But from the inside, that voice said, 너 아파트 몇채 있잖아. You own many apartments. 그 두고 죽으면, If you leave them behind, 너 어머니가 돈 좋아하잖아. Your mother, she loves money. 너 아빠도 딸잘 키워줄 거야. And you can, she'll take your apartments and she'll raise your daughter well. 그렇게 마음을 끌고. That's how that voice drew her heart. 사람들은 자기 속에 일어난 일들이. The people, 이런저런 생각이 자기 속에서 일어난다고 생각. You know the various thoughts that arise within them. They think it's from themselves. 그런데 냉정하게 그걸 보면. But when we objectively look at these things, 자기 속에 일어난 이야기지만. Although these voices arise within them, 자기 생각이 아닌데. It is not their own thoughts. 내가 하지 않으려고 했던 일들로 마음이 끌려갈 때 참. And oftentimes their hearts are drawn to things that they didn't want to do. 그래서 얼른 문을 걸자. And so she quickly locked her doors. And she began to search the internet. And she realized I have mental problems. And she began to look for a mental doctor. It was past 2 a.m. She got a phone call. Hello. And it was that younger friend. Hey, older sister, what are you doing? Oh, I'm on the internet searching for a psychiatrist. Why? Oh, I think I need mental help. Older sister, even though you may not want to hear this, there's something I need to tell you. Whatever it is, it's okay, say it. And she wanted to hear it. Older sister, please meet the pastor of my church. She said, okay, I'll meet him. Take the bullet train next morning and go to Seoul. I'll be at the station to see you. And that lady came to see me. And I listened closely to her story. And this lady, she didn't realize it. But she could clearly see that an evil spirit was dragging this lady to be killed. Here, there was a woman taken in the act of adultery. She was being dragged to be put to death. And this woman, no matter how strong, how great, how well she may be, there was no way for her to escape death. And then it tells us how she becomes free by meeting Jesus. And that story teaches us many things. And this woman, she came in front of Jesus. And we see Jesus taking charge of all her problems and taking care of them. 
자주 And I talk about this often. 우리 형제 하나가 암이 걸려 전주 전북대 병원에 있어. You know, there was a brother who had cancer and he was at Jeonbuk University Hospital. 오늘 누가 나한테 전화했어요? And one day a pastor called me. 목사님 그 형제 암이 걸렸는데. Pastor, that brother, he has cancer. 병이 점점 더 심해져서. And cancer is getting worse and worse. 앞으로 2, 3일 더못 살고 죽을 것 같아. They say he's going to die in the next 2-3 days. 그 이야기를 들었어요. And that's what they told me. 제가 그 다음 날 the next day, 저하고 제 아내가 광주 교회 가서 말씀을 전할 때. My wife and I were supposed to go to Gwangju, and I was supposed to preach there. 가는 길에 우리가 전주를 지나가는데. And we were going to be passing through Jeonju on our way there. 제 아내한테 얘기했어요. So I told my wife. 우리 광주 갈때한 시간만 일찍 출발하자. You know, let's leave one hour early as we go to Gwangju. 그래 제가 한 시간 전에 찾아갔어요. And so I went there 출발했어요. one hour early. 그래 이제 그 전북대 병원에 갔어요. And then I stopped by the Jeonbuk University Hospital. 그, 그 형제 병실에 문 열고 들어. And then I opened the hospital room of that brother and went in. 내가 병실 문을 열 때. When I opened the hospital room door. 어떤 생각이 들었냐면. What thought came to me was. 그 병실 안에 죽음의 분위기로 가. That room was completely filled with the atmosphere of death. That brother was lying on his bed and you couldn't tell whether he was alive or dead. And the brother's mother didn't say anything. She was in front of the bed, tears streaming down her face. And the brother's wife, she was silent behind the bed with her head down. That hospital room was already filled with the atmosphere of death. And right then, what I thought was, what if at this place today, if it, was not, if it was not me here, but Jesus, what would have happened, I thought? If Jesus were here, Jesus surely would not leave this brother as he is, but he would fix him. And from then on, what heart I had was, I have Jesus in my heart as well. I had the heart Jesus would fix this brother. And then I shouted at the brother. Hey, bro brother Kim, come on up. Open your eyes. And the brother said to me, Yes, Pastor. And what the doctor says about you is, he says you're not going to survive two, three days and that you're going to die. And, and I sat next to him and I spoke with him. I said, listen closely. And as I came to this room, do you know what I thought? If it was not me in this room, but Jesus here, I thought, what would happen then? And Jesus would not ignore us. He would surely heal you. And then I said to him, I showed him the electrical line. We have the electrical line. Electricity flows through electrical lines. You know, the electricity it runs the fridge, the washer, the air conditioner, the TV, everything. You know, if the electricity could speak, what would it say to us? Master, you want to put me to work, don't you? On one condition. Just have the electric line connected. Then, I'll run your washer. I'll run your air conditioner. And I'll turn the lights on. And I'll run the TV. I'll do everything. What the electricity asks for is that the lines be connected. All the electricity wants is for the lines to be connected. And so the electricity says, Oh, but this house, the son of this house is too ugly. I don't want to work in this house. Electricity will never say such a thing. Why is this house so dirty? I don't like this house. 
전기가 그렇게 말해. Electricity will never say that. 전기는 지저분하고 잘나고 못나고 그 생각 안 해. No, electricity doesn't think whether the place is clean or dirty or great. 이 집주인은 매일 도둑질 말하는구나. You know, people in this house, all they do is steal. 이 집은 일해 주지 말아야지. I'm not going to work in this house. 전기는 절대 그렇게 말하지. Electricity will never say that. 전선만 연결되면 as long as the line is connected, 전기는 그때부터 일을 해요. Electricity will go there and work. 닦기도 돌리고 run the washer. 냉장고도 돌리고 no, run the dryer. 에어컨도 돌리고 run the air conditioner. 전등불도 켜고 turn the lights on. 모든 거 해요. It'll do all the work. 전기는 요구해요. The electricity asks for 주인님. Master, make sure the lines are connected. I'll do the work. Master, you don't have to run the washer. Master, you don't have to fan yourself. I'll run the fan for you. It's wonderful. That's right. Electricity flows through electrical lines. God, Jesus, 마음을 통해서 일하. He works through the heart. 어이 김영재. Hey, brother Kim. 자네 마음이 하나님과 한 마음이 되면. When you become one heart with God, 자네 마음 안에 하나님의 마음이 흘러. Then the heart of God flows in your heart. 그래서 단 자네 마음에 하나님의 마음이 흘러 들어오면. And when the heart of God flows into your heart. 자네가 당하는 어떤 문제든지 간에 no matter what problem you face, 자네의 문제가 아니야. It is not your problem. 그걸 설명 안 했어. And I explained it to him. 자 김영재 눈을 떠봐. Hey brother Kim, open your eyes. 내 모습 좀 들어봐. You know, listen to me. 자네는 암에 걸렸어. And so you have cancer. 이달 맞게 더못 산다고 돼 있어. They said you're only going to live two or three more days. 그러나 예수님이 자네 마음 안에 들어오면. But if Jesus enters your heart. Your cancer is nothing. I told him. How can you unite your heart with Jesus? I explained it to him. And so when I entered this hospital room, you know, your wife, your mother, they were filled with the atmosphere of death. But if it was not me here, 예수님이 자리 오셨다면, but if it was Jesus here, 병든 자리를 보고 그냥 지나가실까? Would Jesus just ignore you, seeing that you're sick? 고치실까 생각을 해. Or would he fix you? I thought about that. 난 예수님 잘 몰라. I don't know that very well. 성경을 통해 예수 알수 있는. But through the Bible, I know about Jesus. 성경을 보니까, and when I looked in the Bible, 예수님 병자 한 번도 못 본지가 다 고치셨어. Jesus not once ignored the sick; he healed them all. 만약 예수님 자리 계셨다면, if Jesus was here, 자네 몸도 고치실 거야. He would heal you as well. Do you believe it? They said that you're going to die in two or three days. But if you believe that Jesus fixes you and heals you, Jesus will surely heal you. If you believe this, you become one heart with God. And from then on, Jesus enters your heart. Then your sickness is nothing. And when I'm not talking about Christianity, the religion, I'm talking about the world of people's hearts. Everyone, all of us have the heart. Now, for example, suppose I'm a single man. And suppose Pastor Joseph, he's a single woman. One day I meet Pastor Joseph. And I feel love towards her. Oh, Joseph, I love you. Let's get married. I really like you. You are my sunshine. You are my sunshine. My only sunshine. My only sunshine. You make me happy. You make me happy. 내가 노래를 불렀어. And I sang to her. 조셉 목사님이. And Pastor Joseph. 우리 동성 연애 하는 게 아닙니다. No, we're not homosexual. 예, 여자라고 생각해요. No, suppose he's a woman. 알겠어요? Do you understand? And she had the heart to love me. And she says, Mr. Oksu, since when did you love me? From long ago. Why do you tell me now? You should have told me earlier. And I loved you too. Then we become one heart, right? 
맞아 같은 마음이 돼. Yes, we become same heart. 그렇죠? Right? 근데 내가 조셉 씨 내가 당신 사랑합니다. But suppose I Joseph I love you. 밤에 잠을 못 잠요 당신 생각하느라고. Thinking of you I cannot sleep at night. 조셉 못 잠. And then Pastor Joseph says. 난 당신보다 멋진 남자 있어요. I have a better man than you. 난 싫어요. I don't like you. 그러면 다른 마음이 같은 마음. Then is that the same heart or different heart? Yeah. Yes. 근데 아, 나 당신 사랑합니다. Oh yes, that's great. I love you. 그럼 우리 마음이 하나가 돼요. Then we become one heart. 행복하고 we become happy 기뻐요. and joyful. 마음은 이집저집저 집을 찾아내요. And so the heart goes this house, this place, that place, that place. 마음, 마음, 두, 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 and then it searches this person's heart, that person's heart, this person's heart. So when she and I, when we become one heart, we become so happy. 마음이 다르면 if the hearts are different, 부부지간도 싫어지고 even if it's your own wife, you hate each other. 아들, 아들, even between father and son, you hate each other. 근데 예수님하고 우리하고 마음이 하나가 되면 but when we become one heart with Jesus, 그러면 그때부터 from then on, 예수 우리 마음 안에서 일을 하기 시작. Jesus begins to work inside of our hearts. 내가 암으로 죽어가는 형제 중에 so I told this brother who was dying of cancer. 김영재, brother, 도쳐봐, 도봐. brother Kim, open your eyes and look at me. 내가 병원 아들 자네는 암에 걸 이사비도 못 산다고 말했어. The doctors told me that you're gonna die in a few days of cancer. 근데 이건 형편이야. But those are the circumstances. 만약 예수님이 자네 마음 안에 받아들인 말. Only if you accept Jesus into your heart. 전기는 전선을 통해 흘러가. Electricity flows through electrical lines. 예수님은 전선을 통해 흘러가. Jesus does not pass through electrical lines. 예수는 차를 타고. Jesus does not ride in the car to get into your room. 그분하고 나하고 마음이 흐르면. But when your heart flows together with Jesus, 그분의 능력이, His power, 그분의 평안이, His peace, 그분의 기쁨이, His joy, 그분의 행복이, His happiness, 그대로 내게 흘러 들어와. Flows all into you. 내게 어떤 평안이 일어나고, you get to have a peace you never had before. 내게 어떤 행복이 일어나고, you get to have a happiness you never had before. 내게 어떤 기쁨이 일어나고, you get to have a joy you never had before. 내게 어떤 힘이 일어나는 거야. You get to have a strength that you've never had before. 알겠습니까? Do you understand? 알겠습니까? Do you understand? 성경을 읽어봤어요. I read the Bible. 성경에서 항상 예수님은 우리가 상상할 수 없는 말. In the Bible, Jesus always says things that we never imagined. The man with the infirmity for 38 years was lying there. Jesus asked him, Will thou be made whole? Take up your bed and walk. You can get up and walk. And the man, he thought, Are you telling me to take up my bed and walk? Nonsense. My legs are all withered. These legs cannot walk. I'm going to fall and collapse. You're telling me to walk? Nonsense. That man has a heart different from Jesus. But he didn't say that. Did you tell me to walk? Do you mean it? Then you're going to give me the strength to walk. Alright, let me get up and walk. And he got the strength and he became able to walk. Everyone's talking about the world of the heart. And during the time I read the Bible many times. 30 times, 40 times, 50 times, 60 times. Today as well. Yesterday night, 11시에 잤는데, I went to bed at 11. 잠이 깼어요. I woke up. 이런 한참 보다 우리 한 시예요. And I looked at the clock. It was 1 a.m. 두 시간밖에 안 잤어. I only slept for two hours. 어제 오후에 낮잠을 좀 잤거든요. Because yesterday I took a nap during the day. 내가 여기 와서 시차를 미국 시차 아니고 한국 시차를 유지하는. And even though I'm here, I don't want to be on the American time. I still want to maintain the Korean time. 밤에 조금 자고 낮에 조금 자. I sleep a little bit at night and sleep a little bit during the day. 제가 이렇게 이제 여행 많이 좀 그런 경우 있는데. And so when I travel a lot, this tends to happen. 자 이제 사람의 마음이라는 게 너무 재밌는 거죠. And the funny thing about people's hearts is. 여러분 부부 시간도 마음이 같이 얼마나 너무 행복해. Between husband and wife, when your hearts flow together, you become so happy. 마음이 다른 불행해. And when your hearts are different, you become miserable. 서로 같이 있을 때. And when you are together. 맞아 이제 이야기를 해요. And you sit face to face and you talk. 내가 이야기를 할 때. And when I speak. 
이 사람이 나하고 마음이 맞으면 When this person has the same heart as me, 이야기를 받아들여요. He accepts my words. 둘이 한 마음이 돼. And the two of us become one heart. 내가 이야기할 때 And when I speak to him, 내 마음이 안 받으리면 And when he does not accept my heart, 서로 마음이 달라요. Our hearts become different. 근데 우리가 마음이 다르지만 But even though we have different hearts, 이 사람의 마음을 받아들이면 But if I accept his heart, 같은 마음이 돼. We become one heart. 그럼 우리는 너무 행복해. Then we become very happy. 예수님 마음 우리 관계. And that's how it is with Jesus. That's the relationship between us and God. No, we and God have different hearts to begin with. But when we accept the word of God, even though we don't understand, when we accept the word of God, then the heart of God flows into our hearts. Do you know what begins to happen? The heart of God begins to flow inside of us. Then the peace that's inside of God, the happiness inside of God, the joy inside of God, it begins to flow into our hearts. An amazing thing happens. Let me tell you. This woman was taken in the act of adultery. She was being dragged to be stoned. And she meets Jesus. And the scribes, they say, Master, this woman was taken in the act of adultery. And she should be stoned to death. But Master, what sayest thou? This woman's problem was now handed to Jesus. The law of Moses says that she should be stoned to death. But Master, what will you say? And Jesus saved this woman. Why was Jesus able to work for this woman? This woman knows that she should be stoned to death. But there was nothing she could do about this. Master, this woman was taken in the act of adultery. Moses commanded that such a woman should be stoned. But Master, what sayest thou? Now let me ask you. Do you think at that moment this woman cares about the Olympics? Do you think she'd be caring about the marathon? Should be, do you think she cares about Manhattan? What do you think she's caring about at that moment? The voice of Jesus. What will the Lord say? That's what she's interested in. Because her fate's going to be determined by what he says. And so what's the reason this woman's fate is determined by the voice of Jesus? This woman, there was nothing she could do at all at this point. There was no way for her at all. Do you understand? Now she has no way whatsoever her own opinions, her own ways, if she had her own ways and methods, hey Jesus, I want to do this, I want to do that. But now she had no way of her own whatsoever. Even though she had a pretty face, it couldn't help her. Even though she was good, it couldn't help her. Even though her money couldn't help her. She had no way whatsoever. Right then, what happens to us? That's when we can trust it to Jesus. Oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. She couldn't say that. So now, where is this woman's hope? Her faith will be determined according to what the words of the voice of Jesus says. There is no way other than Jesus anywhere that could save this woman. So all her heart is inclining towards the voice of Jesus. And she knows that everything of hers is useless now. And so her hope was not in her, not in her own goodness, it was not in her own heart, it was not in her money, now she knew that her life completely depended upon the voice that was going to come from the lips of Jesus. Let me ask you. 
Do you think at this point she cared whether she had a pretty face? Do you think she cared whether how smart she was? Do you think she was interested in how much money she had? She placed all her interest upon the voice of Jesus. Is that right? And waiting for the beautiful voice to come from there. That's exactly it. 그 여자의 소망은 this woman's hope 지금까지 자기 어떤 노력에 달렸는데 until now it was up to her efforts. 그날 예수님 만났을 때 but that day when she met Jesus 여자의 소망이 어디로 바뀌 예수님이 그 예수 자기의 소망이 where was her hope now? Now Jesus was her hope. 이건 우리 인생의 놀라운 면을 얘기해요. And this tells us something amazing about our lives. 여러분 어떤 문제가 일어나든지 간에 no matter what problem may happen to you. If you place your hope upon Jesus, if you wait for Jesus, and if you look to Jesus, Jesus himself takes care of all your problems. And so I explained this for 15 minutes to that brother who was dying of cancer. Brother, the doctor says that you're not going to live the next two, three days. But if, but if Jesus works, this cancer is nothing. Now, for Jesus to work inside of you, you and Jesus have to become one heart. And, and for you to become one heart, you have to know what Jesus says. And you have to believe him in your heart. And when you and Jesus become one heart, and before I came here to this room, I thought this, if it was not me in this room, but Jesus in this room, surely he would fix this disease. That's what I told him. And you too should believe that. Jesus surely wants to heal you. And when you believe that Jesus will fix you, you and Jesus become one heart. It's the disconnected electrical line getting reconnected. And as the electricity flows, as the electricity will flow, is that right? You become one heart. Then this disease is nothing. Do you understand? Yes, Pastor. And I prayed for him. You know, God give him your grace and heal his disease. I'm leaving. Hurry up and get up. Goodbye. I got in my car with my wife. And we went to Gwangju and then we came home. And then about 10 days later, I was having breakfast and I got a phone call. Hello. Pastor, it's me, Kim Chung Wan. Oh, yeah, so how are you? Pastor, I'm all healed now. They examined me. There's no cancer cells in my body. The doctor's releasing me. That's why I'm calling you, Pastor. A man on the verge of death. In 10 days, he was completely healed. That brother was released. He played soccer. You know, he came, he rode it to his car. He came to our church in front of the congregation. He talked about how God healed him. Now the important thing is electricity flows through electrical lines. Water flows through pipelines. The work of God works inside of us when we become one heart with God. So Jesus told the sick man, rise, take up your bed and walk. And so he says something impossible. Humanistically, it's nonsense. But if Jesus says so, it will be done. And so with faith, from then on, our hearts and the heart of Jesus become one. From then on, it's so amazing how God works inside of us. And through this, I saw God changing many, many people. It's so amazing. As we look at the word of God, I united my heart with God's. One time, I went to Hapcheon. 
There was a sister. She came to me crying. I asked her, "Why are you crying?" Pastor, for 20 years, all my husband does is drink. The next morning, I told her husband to come, and the husband came. I asked him, "Are you perfect?" He drinks every day. He says, "I'm not perfect." I open to him the Bible, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. What does the Bible say? You are not perfect. But through the death of Jesus and His blood, you are perfected. It says. Are, are you perfect? No, I'm not. What does the Bible say? It says that I'm perfect. So are you perfect? I'm not perfect. Is the Bible right or are you right? The Bible is right. If the Bible says you're perfect, then you're perfect. Yes, that's right. So are you perfect? I'm not. I fought with him for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, he says, I'm perfect. And do you know what happened? The strongest liquor in Korea is soju. He would drink 8 to 10, 12 bottles a day. But from that day, the desire to drink all ran away. And he entered the missionary school. And he's here somewhere. And he came here to the camp. And it's amazing. God works through the heart. So God wants to enter your heart. At first, your heart was different from God's heart. And when you unite your heart one with God, God will work from your heart. And when you steal, you know, that starts from your heart. Everything you do starts from your heart. Good things, bad things, wicked things, whatever things. And when your heart becomes connected with Jesus, the peace of God, the joy of God, the, the holiness of God will enter into you. And all of you will change into the good heart. And you'll become happy. And I hope that you will become happy. There's wickedness, dirty things, deceitful things in our hearts. But there is no such heart in the heart of God. And when the heart of God flows into your heart, when you become one with the heart of God, you will change into amazing people. Let us pray. Oh, Holy Father God, we thank you. Through sin, we're supposed to receive destruction. Lord, you loved us. And when we receive the heart of God, we know you live and work inside of us, God. May you bless all of us here and have us receive the grace of God. We ask of you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.